Hello everyone, how's it going? Dr. Incompetent here, and let's do a complete beginner's guide for Pal World, shall we? What we're going to do in this guide is fire up a brand new game with a new character so that you can play along or watch to see if this is a kind of game that you would like to try out. And we're going to explain the very basics from the controls, the UI, some basic tips and tricks and survival strategies. And I'm going to do so in a way that's nice and slow and thorough so that all of the small details are ironed out and you can enjoy this game at your own pace. This is not going to be a guide on how to min-max and the fastest way to jump uh, ahead in the game and to skill up and all that stuff, but rather a guide to explain the fundamentals so that you can play Pal World in the way that you want to play it and that you don't miss anything because in my experience streaming it there was a lot uh, that I didn't understand and I had people help me out with and point out to me. And there's things that I learned by trial and error as well that I'm going to share with you so that you can really enjoy this game because there's a lot going on here. It's in early access. I'm going to be playing on the PC using Xbox PC Game Pass and I'm going to be using a controller. And I like using a controller, but some of the key bindings aren't very obvious and I'll be explaining those as well. So. Let's dive in and check out the game with a new world right now. So once you choose new world, you come to the world settings screen where you can change the name. And we're just going to call this um, Incompetent Tutorial. And as far as everything else, I'm going to not make this a multiplayer world so that I can uh, casually explain things. We're going to be on difficulty normal. Uh, this is the standard game balance and I think this is a good way to learn the game. It's not too hard in my experience and we'll be able to just experience a little bit of threat but nothing prohibitively difficult in my opinion. Okay and I'm not going to change any of the custom settings but you can alter those if you want. I'm just going to go in with a very standard approach and finish setting up the world and start the game. Yes. So once we get to the character creation screen, uh, it is worth noting that at least in the early access what I'm checking out right now, you cannot change your appearance once the game has started, but they're going to add ways for you to do this, I believe. So I'm going to go ahead actually and just go into the presets and give us just a very standard look. This is fine. And then um, you can change you know, your body type and your skin color. On the channel, I always like to have a nice blue skin, and you can alter the color of yourself pretty uh, dramatically, which is great. I love when they give you this much um, customization option. Okay, there we go. And then we're going to go into face. You see all the different options. Now, I always have a beard, uh, but I think it's funny um, that the beard guy is so angry, whereas like... You know, you can go with not as angry, but we'll be a surly beard man, and that's fine. The hair is fine, the beard is fine, but I am going to change the color. So you have different hairstyles. You could change the color. You can go with like a, a default color, and that's fine. And then for the face, uh, you could change the eye type that you have, the eye color. I'm going to change this to blue. And then we're going to go down to the eyebrow color, and we will just match this like this to the hair. And I think we're looking great. Yes, I am ready to begin. Oh my goodness. There are sheep, chickens, and kitties looking at me on the beach. What have I done? Where am I? There's a sheik asleep. The towers are the key. The tree holds the truth. All right. Well, looks like we need towers and we need a tree. Okay, so right away when you wake up, you will start in this little area 
and you could go back down and explore, but what we're going to do is just go right out of this cave. And we're in the windswept hills. So right away you hear that musical effect that reminds me of Zelda and that is what this game is like. It's it's a it's kind of like taking Pokemon, Zelda Breath of the Wild, Ark Survival Evolved and blending them together uh with some management aspects. It's a very unique combination. It it both feels familiar and yet different. And let's talk about what we see on the screen. So I'm walking, now again, I'm using a controller, so I'm using the left stick to move, the right stick to move the camera. And at the top center of the heads-up display, you will see that there is a ribbon giving you uh, a compass, and there is a kind of diamond icon with wings that is pointing you to this statue that's glowing orange, which is a fast travel point that we need to go and get so we can teleport kind of a la Genshin Impact, and there's a little bit of that thrown in here as well. In the upper right, you see I have some tutorial objectives. These are meant to kind of guide you into the game. There is a bit of a tutorial that's built to teach you some of the basics, but as it's in early access, I imagine that they'll develop this portion of the game a little bit more. So that's what I really want to explain to you so you can understand it, uh, because I felt like some of the explanations in the tutorial and the quests uh, were not fully developed. So here is a PAL, and it's a level 3 chickpea, and you can see right there some information about it hovering it's over its head. And these basic PALs that you see in the starter area, they are not hostile. So this guy is like just chilling, and we can leave him there. So the first thing they want us to do is pick up fallen branches or hit trees to get some wood. So if I walk over this branch you see it highlights and then it says wood above it now on the controller i push x or the square button to pick it up and then on the left of the screen you'll see that i got wood times two and in the upper left it says level one i just got six experience in fact when i pick this up i get another experience and you see how it says open the build menu with uh and the pc game pass version of this is as far as i understand it is a direct port of the xbox version but there are some problems with the port right now in that is an example where it doesn't actually tell you the key binding if you're using a controller to open the build menu you push up on the controller and you can see that what we can build right now is a workbench and you just move this wheel with the right analog stick to select what you want to build. You can use the right and left bumper to move to different category tabs on the build menu. But right now, all we can build is this workbench. Now, I'm going to walk around. And if you push in L3, you can sprint. And as soon as I sprint, you see that white um, crescent bar that appears next to your character. That is indeed your stamina bar that you're running down. And I'm going to pick up this stick right here. And we leveled up. So it says um, level 2 and current technology point 6 at the top center of the screen. And you see how at the bottom center of the screen it says you have unused stat points. So let's talk about how to get that. Now it says press something to open the inventory and use status points to strengthen your character. You press start to open the inventory. And you can see what I'm carrying. Here's all my wood. Now let's talk about this screen for a little bit. This is your inventory. You have a bunch of grid squares, but it's not based on squares like No Man's Sky. It is based on weight. So you could see at the bottom of this, I have a weight count out of 300 currently. And the wood that I have in the upper left, you see 18.0. That means that this weighs 18 units of weight. And I can carry up to 300. You can move after you're carrying your max weight, but you slow down. And then I believe if you're carrying 50 or more units of weight over your maximum, you will not be able to move at all. So you have to drop stuff onto the ground to be able to move. Now, um, here is my player name, seven, uh, 676. I haven't really figured out a great way to change that yet on the PC. I didn't see it in the character creation. Maybe I just missed it and it was very obvious. Uh, but it's a kind of a funny, you know... Um, throw to arc i suppose or other games that you're just some kind of random dude or lady and then you see my paper doll in the center of this inventory i've got weapons accessories and a head slot body slot a shield and a glider and then you could put some food here uh that 
your play the player and your pals will automatically eat so you got to feed your buddies and you got to feed yourself and over on the right column, he says, it says player level two. I need 30 experience to get to the next level. I'm just kind of looking from the top to the bottom. The green bar is my health. I have 500 hit points. The orange bar is my hunger or satiety bar. I'm at 82 out of 100. Then you see my stats, and I have hit points, stamina, attack, defense, work speed, and weight. Then when you level up, this enhanced stats button will become blue. You could push A on this on the controller. And then what happens is you get to pick one of these stats to level up. Now, as far as I understand it, later in the game, although it might be bugged currently, there is a way to uh, reset your stats. So you don't have to worry too much about this. But I will tell you that in my experience and from tips that I have received, the, tip, the uh, stats that you want to focus on are down here at the bottom, work speed and weight. Weight, each level of weight that you raise gives you 50 more weight which is incredible, and then each level of work speed that you raise increases how fast you do everything, like how fast you log, um, build things, anything where there's a, a timer above you as you're interacting with something, this will make it faster as far as I understand it, and that is incredibly powerful. So um, I'm going to boost my work speed at the moment, and I'm just going to say, okay. And now it says enhanced stats is grayed out because there's nothing left to do. Then I'm going to move using the right um, and left button R1, L1 to go between these different categorical tabs of the pause menu. You can go to your party screen, but we've got no pals. You get to the technology screen, which is kind of evocative of ARC, and you will see that, okay, I'm level 2. So now I can purchase all of these uh, upgrades at level two and then when I get level three I can purchase this row and anything below it if that I haven't yet purchased at the bottom of the screen you'll see um, in this window the bottom left technology points I have six so I can buy everything up here uh, provided it costs six or less so these are all one or two so I want to definitely learn how to make a pal, uh, pal box yes let's learn how to make a wooden chest and let's learn how to make a pal sphere. This is like your Pokeball, so you can catch uh, the pals. Uh, campfire is wonderful. And I have two points left, so we're going to learn structures. We'll save the one point for the repair bench, but you'll get this really fast. And in general, you just want to buy everything. Okay, so now we've purchased that, and we've completed the level up. Let's go talk to this person, and we can push X and the Expedition Survivor... I guess that's what I was on. Oh, did you come from the outside world? I could tell you don't have the smell of pals on you. Take it too easy around here and you'll get yourself killed. Here, take this. Make up a weapon or something. So they've given us 10 wood. You can see whenever you get something, it's kind of on the left center of your screen. And this will let us make a workbench. So if you look in the upper right, it's telling us that we want to check the survival guide build a primitive workbench and craft the PAL sphere to capture a PAL. We're going to make a workbench, but we're not going to worry about making our base right now. We're going to do that in a moment because there are some basic tools that we need to construct with the workbench. So I'm going to push start and I'm going to go... Um, here's the PAL deck. So these are three things that are loaded up. You see Lamb Ball, Kativa, and Chickpea. These are like the first three um, on the Poke Deck, Pal Deck, whatever. Now, over on Options, the far right tab, this is where you can find the survival guide. And it's got all kinds of good tips about, like, you know, what should I do first or about Pal. So if you want extra information, come in here to verify or learn new things. Now, I still haven't interacted with this fast travel statue. So you need to come over to it and push X. You get a technology point just for talking to this thing, and now you see how it's blue, and we've unlocked fast travel. So if I push select, I will open up the map. You see on the map, I have got some areas like already discovered, and I can use the right stick to kind of zoom in. And from a fast travel point, you can teleport to other fast travel points if you have them unlocked. And you can only do that if you're at a fast travel point. So... That's very useful 
Um, and now let's go ahead and make a workbench. So I'm just going to drop down here. There is fall damage in this game, but not if you're falling down such a small distance. You push A to jump, okay? And um, you push R2 to, uh, you know, swing with your weapon. And you can hold L2 to kind of, you know, aim or get close up with the over-the-shoulder view. L1, you see how it says no pals and team? This is like you're throwing your pal or Pokemon pal at an enemy or at an object that you want it to work with. R1 is throwing your pal sphere to try to capture a pal. And we can't do that because we don't have any. So I'm going to push up to open the build menu. And I'm going to select the primitive workbench by using the right analog stick and pushing A on the workbench. Then you see that there's a ghosted blueprint of this item in the screen. And if it's blue, I can build it. If it's, um, you know, let's see if I can get it to be red, then it that means no, that's not going to work. I'm just going to build it right here. And you can see in the tooltip next to it, it's going to take uh, some wood to construct. And I believe I have 16 wood, and this is going to take 2 wood. So I'm just going to push X to build it. Now, it's not done. You have just basically placed it, but you need to come over here, and you see how it says 10 workload. There's no worker assigned. You can press and hold square to build it. Square is your basic interact button, or X on the controller is your basic interact button. Here I go. So I'm just holding down X and we're building it. And um, now it's done being built and you can select a recipe. Now, what does it mean no workers? Well, we'll look at that in a moment. But you could. the cool thing about this game that surprised me that I didn't understand at first was that your pals, in addition to just helping you in combat like Pokemon do, they are like um, villagers, like in Medieval Dynasty or something, and they can help you around your base by doing jobs, gathering items, um, farming, building things, all kinds of different jobs and labor they can do for you. So I'm going to select the primitive workbench, and you can see these are the five items I know how to make. A pal sphere, a club, a torch, a pickaxe, and a stone axe. And I'm just using the directional pad to move between these. Currently, I can only make the wooden club because I don't have any stones to make these items, and I don't have any um, paldium fragments to make the pal sphere. So I'm just going to make a club, and I push A on it, and then you can see um, it's going to take five of my wood to make this below the club in the upper right, and I can use the right directional button to make two if I want. You see right now I'm currently making one. I'm just going to make one. I'm going to push A to start production. And then again, you have to push and hold X or square depending on which kind of controller you're using. Now I'm using an Xbox controller. And there we go. And I open this up. And this is something that, <laughs> that threw me. But once you craft it, you have to actually pick it up off of the workbench. You don't have the club yet. You see how it says acquire? You have to push X again and then you pick it up and my character is automatically being equipped with it and I can push R2 to use this. Now I can push triangle or Y to put this away and I'm going to pick up this wood right here and on the ground here's a stone and when you walk over it it will highlight and you will see the name of it kind of in the center of the screen if you can interact with it. Here's some berries that we can get for food. We're getting both berries and seeds. And I'm just going to, you see how the bush turns white when I'm close to it. I'm just going to push X to pick these berries. And then once I've got these berries, I'm going to push start. I'm going to do a couple of things. First, I'm going to go over to these berries. Now you see how my hunger is right now 55 out of 100, the orange bar with the bread loaf icon. If I push Y um, on the food, I'm going to use it. And you can select who to use it on. And this screen will show you and all of your pals once you get them. And the orange bar is your food. And I just push A, and you'll see I eat it, and it fills up my orange bar. So I can do that, but I can also um, push A to move this and put this down here in my food, except I need a feed bag to do that. So right now, I'm going to be manually eating. But once we can craft a feed bag, um, we will be able to put food on those slots. So right now, you just push 
um, Y or triangle and you eat them. Now you'll notice how there's in the bottom left corner of the berries, there's a little uh, time that's ticking down from 10 minutes. That's how long it is before this food um, spoils. Now I picked up some more berries and some more wood and it's all going into my inventory here. I've got some stone. If I want more stone, I can push um, Y to get my weapon out, and I can hit this. And you see how eventually, on the left of the screen, it says stone times one. I get some stone out of this by hitting it with my club, but this is the wrong tool. This club is what you're going to use for combat. It is not really used for gathering, so I'm just busting up the durability on my club unnecessarily. And, oh, here's a um, Paldium Fragment. Might as well pick that up. And now I have a little bit of stone, so I'm just going to sprint, pushing in L3 to run over to the bench, and I'm going to push X, and now we can make a bunch of things. So I can make the Pal Sphere, but I actually want to make the Stone Pickaxe. I need, um, mm, gosh, what do I want to make? Yeah, I'll make the Pickaxe first. I'm just going to start production. And we'll acquire it. And then now, I can't make anything else because I have no stone. But let me um, push B to get out of this. B is just the general cancel everything button in the game. You see I leveled up. So I've got technology points and stat points. So I'm going to go to the right of the inventory screen. I'm going to click Enhance Stats. And I'm going to boost Work Speed again and say OK. And then I'm going to go over to Technology. And now you can see we can make level 3 items. So I do want to make the Repair Bench. And I have 6 points left. Um, all of these are good. I'm going to get a bow. And I'm going to get arrows. So, just like in Pokemon, if you want to tame a pal or capture it in your pal sphere, you need to kind of weaken them by doing damage to them first. Now, the low-level pals, like the sheep and the chicken guy, you can just stand there and hit them with the club. But some of the other pals will run away. So, the bow is really good if they want to try to run so that you can weaken them at a distance and then use your pal sphere to capture them. The bed is amazing uh, for yourself so that you can pass night easily. You need a straw bed for your pals. And we're going to go ahead and learn how to make cloth. And we'll get the repair kit soon enough. Okay. So now I can push um, Y on the controller to switch over to my pickaxe. And we can come to this big rock pile here. And I'm just going to hit this and no. That is not a rock pile. You see how it's next to this wall? This is just part of the environment. So that is not something we can get. I'm going to pick up this stone. But this rock pile, you see how when I move close to it, it has the white outline? That's your indicator that you can actually harvest from this. And now you see when I'm hitting it with the correct tool, I'm doing like five times the damage. And I got a, a Paldium Fragment and Stone from this. So you can get Paldium Fragments sometimes and or sometimes from these quarries, I believe. Yep, there's an ore. So you mostly get stone, but you have a chance of getting some other resources here. You see how my stamina depleted. It also starts to show your weight next to your character when you get heavier. And stone is no joke heavy. So I've got way more stone than I actually need. I don't need to carry around like 500 stone right now. So I'm gonna go up to the bench and just continue working on the tutorial options. So it says craft the PAL sphere. So I'm gonna do that. I can push X now and make one. I'm just gonna make one. Now, why am I only make one? Well, remember, push X to acquire it. Now you have it. And we can push R1 to throw it to capture a PAL. And it tells you in the, the tip on the left there that weakened PALs are easier to catch, so we need to hit them with our club. It's lovingly called the friendship stick because that's how you make friends. You hit them with the club until they agree to be your friend. Now, I'm going to craft another couple of things. I'm going to craft an axe so that we can gather wood from trees faster, acquire it, and I'm going to... I want to get a torch, but I don't have any wood. So I'm going to push 
um, Y to switch over. And you see how it's getting darker? I'm going to run to a tree and get the torch. Now, I'm going to pause the game. It's a little bit hard to see, but time passes um, all the time if I don't... Actually, I'm not sure if the time still passes in the inventory screen or not. Um, but let me tell you, in the bottom left of the screen, you'll see not only my health and my food, but there is also a temperature gauge, a la Zelda Breath of the Wild, and it's going to get cold at night. Unfortunately, we wake up from the expedition or the shipwreck or whatever naked. I have a loincloth and a backpack, which is not good for um, fighting the elements. So when it gets cold, uh, nighttime, we're going to get cold. But if we have a torch, we will be able to mitigate that. Now also, in next to the temperature bar, you'll see that there's a sun with a radial dial around it. And as that fills up, that means the day is over and we will go into the moon icon for the evening. So I'm going to quickly craft myself a torch. So that we can at least see and not freeze to death in the evening. And I will acquire it. All right. And then I'm going to go to Pal Spheres. And I'm going to push Y because this allows you to craft the maximum that you can. So I'm going to make as many as I can, which is currently five of these Pal Spheres. And you just have to hold down X while you craft all of them. Now, in the upper left, while I'm doing this, notice that I'm getting experience points just by building this. You get experience for most things. Crafting, gathering, but you get the most from capturing pals. So, let's do that. Let's go ahead, push um, Y, and even though this is my torch, you can actually do pretty good damage with your torch. Because... Eventually, I'm pushing R2 to hit this lamb ball. You see how it catches on fire? That's a damage over time. So, this guy is hurt. You, now, when you're fighting, um, you push R2 to hit it, and you see the health bar above it. That's how much hit points it has. You can push the B button to do this combat roll. And once you feel like it's weakened enough, you can hold R1 to throw your pal sphere. And it'll tell you what the chance of capturing it is based on its level, your capture rate, and its health. And you see there, I had a 100% chance, and I captured a lamb ball. So we got wool, we got mutton from capturing it. And you see here in the bottom left now, above my health bar, there's my pals. I only have one, which is the level one lamb ball. But I can now summon my buddy. You can push um, L and uh, uh, left and right, rather, on the directional pad to switch between your pals. If you have more than one, you can fit five in your party. And if we want to summon our pal, which I'll do right now, just for fun, um, I can hold L1 and throw this guy out here. And there's my buddy. And he is hurt because um, I hit him with a torch and caught him on fire. But he will slowly heal. He will heal faster if he is not out um, and we will talk about that as we move further down the map. So at this point in the upper right, it tells us that we need to build a PAL box in an open space to make your base. Now, when I was playing this game the first time, um, I made the mistake, okay, of building my house first because I thought that's what you needed to do. And it messed up the game. So do not build your house first. Build the uh, PAL box first and then build your house. And I'll show you why. So I'm going to push select and open up the map. And you want to kind of build your base in, an, in a large area. And my buddy Alex, uh, who turned me on to the game, told me that a sandy area was good. And this area right here, um, kind of northwest of us, by the waterfall and the lake is where I built my base. And I think it's a great location for us to start because it's a wide open space and it's comfortably in the starting area. So let me do, do, do. Here's the waterfall right here, actually. Now you see that blue rock, um, that's Paldium, that we can go ahead and mine if we want to get make some more PAL spheres and stuff. I'm going to push select. I'll show you that right down there, is where I want to make my base. Now you notice how there's those daydream, those kind of like pinkish purple pals down there. They only come out at night. 
So there are some pals that only appear in the evening. And then look at this. Many of the pals, like these kitties, they are asleep. So um, I'm going to capture one of these cats right away. While it's asleep, this is terrible of me. Now, I'm going to give you a little tip. We caught Cativa, which is that if you have your pal out, they kind of do what you're doing, and this sh sheep will fight. And so you have to be careful because sometimes the sheep will fight and kill the pal. And if you kill the pal, you cannot tame it. You cannot make it your friend. It's dead. So you want to get it low enough that you can capture it, but not so low that you accidentally kill it. And we leveled up just by capturing some pals. So I'm going to talk about a few things while we go into the inventory screen. First of all, raw meat. You see how if you mouse or select a food item, there is a tooltip, and it tells you um, when it's going to spoil, but it also tells you how much nutrition it's going to fill you up. So the nutrition bar, we're at 59 out of 100. This actually gives you a ton, and eating raw meat is somehow okay in this game. Um, it's not as good for, like, it doesn't re recover as much nutrition as cooked food, but it's great early game. You see how the berries are only 15. So I'm actually going to just eat this right now to fill myself up. Now I'm going to go to enhanced stats, and um, notice how my weight is 400. How can my weight be 400? It's normally 300. Well, if you select weight, and if you select any of these stats, you get a description of them. You see how this is my max carry capacity, but PAL skill effect plus 100. The cats are amazing because each cat gives you passively plus 50 weight. So if I go um, to my party, these cativas, you can see when you select one of them, push A on it, It'll open up the PAL screen, and it tells you um, what it will do in combat or what active skills it has. It's passive skills, so this guy is a coward. He doesn't really want to attack that much. But then over in the bottom right, it tells you um, what work it can do. So in the right panel, you'll see what work it can do. So it can do handiwork, it can gather, it can mine, which is key. And it can transport, which means, like, move goods around. It also tells you um, on the right its health and its hunger. And then below that is S-A-N. That is short for sanity. So you need to keep that up to keep your... It's like basically... It's an all-in-one. It's their sanity, but it's also kind of like their happiness and everything. So you want to keep that high. And then on the left column, you could see where it says Cativa. In the middle, it says Partner Skill. Um, cat Helper Level 1. While in team, Kativa helps carry supplies, increasing the player's max carry capacity. So cats are tremendous early on. Now, Lamball, let's select Lamball, and what does he do? Um, Lamball has an active partner skill, which um, allows us to equip it and become a shield. It also says it sometimes drops wool when assigned to the ranch. Um, and we need to build a ranch, which we don't have access to yet. We'll get it soon. But it can help you generate wool. And you see how in the bottom right it has handiwork transporting and farming. Farming is done at the ranch. Um, planting is growing crops. Farming it with the fence is like stuff that's done at the ranch, like laying eggs, producing wool, stuff like that. All right, so... Uh, let's go to tech points and spend our six points here. And I want to make um, clothes right away so that I'm not freezing. I'm also going to make a feed box so that my um, pals that are working at my base can automatically have food to eat. And then I'm going to make a shield for myself so I don't get killed. And that seems good. Okay. Um... Let's go closer to the area where I'd like to build our base. First, we're going to build the PAL box. And I'm going to run down here. Again, because this is the starter area, most of these guys are not going to fight us. And you can see it's already daytime. In the uh, bottom left of the screen, the sun icon is up. It is dawn. 
Now you see the lamb rolled in and hit this guy. Um, I have an 85% chance, so I'll try it. And let's see if this fills up. If this fills up, you got it. If they break out, then you're gonna you lose your pal sphere, and you're gonna have to try to capture it again. So in order to not waste pal spheres, try to capture it when it's you know as close to 100% as you can get it. You get a big boost the first time you capture a pal. So I'm gonna capture one of these chickens as well. You can just hold down R2, by the way, and hit this thing. Um, 75%, 78... Oh, it, I missed. Now, if you miss like that... Oh, my goodness. Yeah, it's over. So, when you miss with your pal sphere, that's it. Like, you missed, and you lose the pal sphere. So, you really want to make sure that um, you are aiming right at it. And the pals do move around. So, we lost. Now, our sheep is like fighting. If you don't want your sheep to be out beating stuff up, you can just push L1 and bring it back home. And then now I don't have any pals out at all. Okay. So... Oh, you know what? I totally misspoke. Um, the Daydream can be out in the daytime. Um, I... The fire spark can only be out at night, but the daydream can be out during night and day. Okay, cool. So, let's go here and... Ooh, look at this. Who crates? So, this is a level 5 big boy, kind of like penguin owl hat wearing dude. But I don't have any pal spheres. So, let's make the pal box. So, I'm going to push up and we're going to go to the pal tab by using R1. And we're going to make a pal box. Now... This thing, it doesn't look like it, but it has an enormous area of influence because this is like your base zone. So when you place this thing, you want to place it in an area with as much space as possible because everything within the blue circle that this baby is going to generate is where our pals will work at our uh, base. And I'm going to just kind of put this right in the middle there. And then now it's placed and I'm going to go over to this and I'm just going to build it holding X and we made it once you make this um, it says assign a pal to your base so I'm going to you can click X on this and this is where you can kind of like store pals and if you collect any pals over five they will automatically just go into your box once you have built the pal box and you could come here and switch between them and then down here in the bottom center box, it says pal who is at your base. I'm going to take this cat and I'm going to put it at the base. And you're going to notice a few things. It says take out a pal at base and they will automatically search for jobs they're capable of doing. So this, the reason you want cats is they mine. So this guy is going to be mining and he's going to gather for us some uh, paldium. However, on the right of the screen, underneath the tutorial, you see how it says pals without beds will get stressed. So we need to build a bed for this pal that we have here. So I'm going to um, push up and I'm going to go to infrastructure and I'm going to build a straw pal bed. And I'm just going to put this. You can't build stuff right to the next to the pal box because it needs some space. But I'm going to build it really close to it like this. And then once this is here, um, you can see the, kit, the cat's actually going to come over and build it. He gets out a little hammer and they do labor... It's, you can't always control what they will do, but he wants to do this more than he wants to mine, which is fine. So he's going to build it for us, which is great. So let's let him do that. I'm going to collect this wood, and we need to um, level up, okay, strengthen our stats, capture five lamb balls is the next step. But also, um, if you go to the PAL box and you push Y to select a mission tab... You can see um, it gives you some base quests, basically. Uh, this is build a wooden chest and deploy a pal to work here. So we already did that one. And if we level up the base, you can see in the bottom center, we can then have more pals working at the base for us. So that's phenomenal. Now, our cat right now is just fighting. Um, oh, no. Okay, phew, I was like, why are you fighting? No, no, no. 
Usually at the base, they don't just fight stuff um, unless they're attacking your base and trying to destroy it. Um, they will just do this. So he's mining. Now, there's nobody on transport right now, so the rocks just sit there. But if I just walk over it, I pick up all those stones, which is great. I'm going to pick up all of this. Okay, so next is to build a uh, box. But before I build a box, let's try to start building a base. So I'm going to push up. And I'm going to go to Foundations, and I'm going to just select Wooden Foundation, push A. And let's just build a small little house for ourselves. I'm going to build it as close to the PAL box as I can, um, but you want to leave space behind the PAL box, because when you summon PALs, they kind of drop from the sky and land behind the PAL box, so you want to leave space for them to do, have their like dramatic entrance. So I'm going to build my house over here. Now... If instead of pushing X to build, you push Y, you will continue building that same item. So this way we can build more um, wood platforms. And I'm out of uh, wood, so I can't build anymore. Now, if you are in the build menu and you push in R3, it goes to disassemble mode. And you can walk over and you can just push X to blow up whatever you are just, um, targeting and get the materials back. So it's a great way if you accidentally build something to just get the materials back and rip it out. Um, however, if you, as far as I understand it, if you disassemble a floor and you have a wall attached, the wall will break and you won't get the materials from it. You will just get the materials from the floor. So you want to kind of dismantle top down. At least I think that's how it's working at the moment. And I'm going to just select an axe, and let's just get a bunch of wood. So let's go with this tree, get ourselves a bunch of wood, so that we can bask in the glory of having a house. Now, you see how on the left it says, Pal's sanity decreases while doing work, causing them to slack off. Build a hot spring or other facilities to get them back on the job. So, once their sanity or happiness goes down, you know, they take a break. The hot spring we can't build yet, but we'll build it soon. I'm going to go back to the build menu by pushing up. I'm going to select wooden foundation, and I'm going to keep building um, a little house over here. So let me see. Can I build it here? Yes. So I'm just going to make a small 3x3 three three house. We can always make this bigger later. And I'm going to uh, build ourselves a doorway right here. And just build a bunch of windows. I love windows. And you see, the building and snapping is, is pretty straightforward. The game looks fantastic, in my opinion. And I'm going to build some steps right here. Um, I'm going to kind of target it right there like this. Perfect. So I can walk up. Now, it is worth noting that if you're in build mode, you will not be able to open the door. So you need to get out of build mode so you can open the door. And here we go. I'm just going to keep building stuff. Um, I won't build windows on all of them, but a lot. Oop, and we leveled up. Fantastic. I'm out of wood. That's okay. I'm going to push start, and I'm going to go to the inventory screen. And I'm going to enhance my stats. And I'm going to go to uh, work speed again. And, oh, I had another level I forgot to assign, and then I boost my weight. So one work speed and one weight. And let's go over to technology, and we have a bunch of points here. So I will now... Um, I'm going to build a few things that will help us around the base. So I'm going to build a berry plantation, which will allow us to farm berries. I'm going to build a ranch, which will allow us to lay eggs with chickens, collect wool. And um, we can build a spear if we want to be better at combat. So we'll get that. Again, we plan on getting everything. So I tell you what, this game is something where I was running around when I was first playing like a chicken with my head cut off because there were just so many things that I wanted to do. And you can do them in whatever order you want. Like right now, I'm getting wood to build my house. But if you don't want to do that, if you want to make sure you have a full party of pals and you want to get more pals working at your base, then, you know, go for it. This is just what I like uh, to do. And we'll build this here. And then this here, and then we can build just a regular wall, just to have a little bit of variety. Now, I will explain um, another feature, which is that 
the roofing is kind of wonky. The slanted roof is a little bit... Um, oops, I didn't mean to build that, so I'm going to just uh, dismantle it. The slanted roof that you can build here has some snapping issues. So if you select this, I believe it's known that it has a, um, some snapping issues. You see how if I try to snap this, it wants to snap it like on the interior, and it doesn't really want to snap on the outside. So there are some workarounds for doing this. One way is to build another wall above this, like so, and then build a slanted roof um, and try to get it to snap here, and you can... You, you aim up top, and then you rotate it all the way around like this, and then you push A, and then you have a slanted roof, and then all you need to do is um, dismantle this second wall when you're done with it. So it's a little bit strange, but it works for now, and then that's how you can get a slanted roof. Or you can just build a flat wooden roof um, and then climb on top, and use that to help you snap it. It's either way. Um, the the flat roof, by the way, you can just build that instead of the slanted roof if you don't mind how it looks. Because it has no problem at all snapping in the right place. It's just a slanted roof that's a little bit uh, wonky at the moment. That might be fixed at any time. Now, another thing is, you do not need a roof. A roof does not insulate you from the cold. All it does is allow you to sleep when you have a bed under it. So if we go to infrastructure and we want to build our bed, as long as we build it under the roof, we can sleep on the bed and pass night safely if we don't care about the night. So you really only need one roof at the beginning uh, so that you can see into your base easily from above and just go ahead and you know sleep if you need to and save wood for other projects. But if you're a person who really wants a roof, of course, finish it off. Chop, 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 chop. There. So now that I have some wood, I'm going to go build a storage box. And the cool thing about storage boxes in this game is that if you build them within the area of influence of your PAL box, then whenever you're crafting or building, everything is automatically taken from your chests. So I'm going to build it right here, and I'm going to press and hold to build it. Um, the kitty is actually coming over to build, but I want to build this myself just to finish it. And now you can start putting in your wood and your stone and your fiber and such. Because um, if you do this, I'm going to put in these fragments. I'll put in this wool, this ore, these seeds, whatever. Even if I want to craft, for example, a workbench in my house... I don't have the wood on me, but it's taking it from my chest. I love games that let you do this. I'm going to build my workbench right over here on this closed wall like uh, this. Oh, but I always do this. It's backwards. Okay, so I'm going to actually uh, dismantle this. But how do you dismantle it? You don't. You can't do that until you've built it completely, but you can just hold B to cancel it and get your wood back so that you can orient this correctly. All right, build a workbench, but I need to rotate it using R1. You can rotate stuff with R1 and L1 uh, using the controller, and then now it is facing correctly, and I can hold X to build this workbench like so. Bam! And we can build stuff if we need it. We want to build um, the cloth outfit, but we'll have to wait a second for that. And um, upset and not willing to do any tasks is my pal. Go figure. I'm going to push Y. I'm going to open up the mission, and we can now upgrade the base to level 2. And all we need to do to level up again is just to build a bed. This allows us to put another pal at our base. However, um, we're going to want to have a bed for... Um, the, the second pal. So I like to build this first. I'm just going to put it right there. And um, the pal might build that if they're not upset. Let's go collect all of this stone. This is why I love having cats early because they just do the gathering of stone for you. It's going to take us a second to get um, somebody that can gather wood for us. But once we get that going, you'll have to do a lot less of this. Now, you see this blue right here, this blue line? 
This is the outer extreme of our uh, base from our PAL box. So that kind of marks the edge of the area where um, you know we can draw from inventory and our PALs will work and all of that stuff. All right, so looks like he's not going to build it because he's upset. So fine, be upset. Ow. Oh, there he goes. He built it. And then um, we're going to go ahead and say, all right, we can put another pal here. But actually, if I just run over here, let's build our uh, shoddy bed. And we're going to just rotate this and build it right under our roof right here. And the cat will come and build that for us. Let's collect this wood. While the cat's building, I'm just going to open this up and transfer my goods. Now, you could push Y to just transfer the whole stack from your inventory into the wooden chest. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and make as many PAL spheres as I can. I can make six, which is phenomenal. He's on a break. So while he's on a break, um, let's go ahead and put some more pals at the base so i'm going to go here and i'm going to take a cat and put it at the base and you see how it drops in out of the sky right there and then immediately it's going to go do a job and it's got a bed to sleep in so it's not unhappy and you see how on the right the base info that panel with the pals that are working at the base has increased there's two pals here there's two beds here and you can see what labor they're doing one's on a break and one's in good condition and is working now, we built the shoddy bed, um, or no, we didn't, because he stopped working because he was upset. Um, and now we built the bed, because the other pal went to finish it. So we're going to go ahead and push Y and upgrade the base, and we can fit another pal here. So what you want to do at this point is do the tutorial in the upper right, and then the base quests are also like a tutorial, giving you a good foundation of a strong... Uh, base so you know we need to build a feed box we want to build a bed all of this stuff so we'll build a bed but we don't have any wood so let's go get some now i'm hungry so i'm going to push start and i'm just going to push um triangle or y on my berries i'm also going to feed that lamb ball because we don't have a feed box yet Bam. I'm grunting. Now, while the stamina bar is red, you have to wait for it to fill back up before you can do something again. So, it's kind of like in No Man's Sky where it overheats. And you want to just make sure to let off of the stamina before you get to the bottom so you don't have to wait for it to, you know, fill all the way back up. Now our weapon is damaged. So this is a good point. Um, when the weapon gets damaged, you can still use it, but it will do, like, very, very little damage. So we need to repair it. We need to have a repair bench to do that, which we don't yet have. Um, and we need to create that. Let's go ahead and uh, we want to make another bed. Look at them carrying stuff. I mean, this is what I love about the game. Look how cute they are. They're just like, I'm carrying this for you to the box. So now they're going to go build that for me. And they run. They're, like, super excited to do that. Okay, good. So let's go ahead and build a repair bench. And I'm just going to put it right here next to this. I'm going to rotate it so that it is... Um, the anvil is up, up at the front for me. There we go. And I'm going to um, pick up the PAL spheres because they're done crafting them. And there's some wood for me to pick up. And the next thing we want to make is uh, the feed box. So I will make a feed box for them. I like to make it right by their bed. And we can just put it right there. I'll make this. You can hear them hammering away. So once you have the feed box, you can push X to open it. And then you can just push triangle to throw these berries in here. And now you don't have to feed your pals that are at your base. They will just automatically eat that when they're hungry. And that will help them with their sanity as well. Like, they'll be like, I'm chowing down. At least I think that helps them with sanity just to be able to eat. Maybe not. 
Um, I know if they're hungry, I don't think that's a good thing for their sanity. Now, I'm going to push X on the repair wheel, and you could see that uh, this bent, my uh, axe is broken. So I just push A to select it, and then you just go down here, and it's going to tell you, okay, to repair it, it takes two stone and two wood, and I just push A, and it repairs it instantly. Now, there's something wrong with the, uh, you know, it's early access, so it takes a second for that to go away. Um, it, it keeps showing like it's broken, but it's really not. And now, um, we have three beds, and we can put another pal at our base, and I will. I'm going to be like, hey, um, let's upgrade the base. They want us to build a campfire, a plantation, and um, deploy a pal to work at the base. So we need to deploy four of them. I'm going to push X, and I'm going to put another cat here, like this. And I'm going <laughs> to... Um, let's go ahead and build, actually, uh, the campfire. Now, wood can burn, so do not build this in your house or near your house. So I'm going to build it right there. Um, they're going to come build it. You notice how when you mouse over it, you see that there's the icons for the pals that are going to come work on it. So they're done. And um, you can cook. So right away, we can make baked berries at this. And so we can just, um, you know, make 30 baked berries if we want. Like that. And I'm going to make it. So I got the frying pan. Now, if you want your pals to cook, they have to have that um, cooking skill. So you can hear them working. I'm going to move the camera around, see what they're up to. I think they're mining. Yeah, they sure are. So I'm getting experience cooking, but this is going to take a while. So I'm actually going to only make eight of these or nine of these, and I'm just going to acquire it. I'm going to cancel it um, and get my berries back. And I'm going to go into my inventory, and you can see baked berries, 21 nutrition, and they restore one sanity. Red berries, 15 nutrition. So these, when you bake them, they do restore sanity. So what, earlier when I was talking about food restoring sanity, it has to be cooked food to do that. And it'll tell you on the tooltip. So now we can help out. The more sanity, the, you know, the more they will actually, uh, I'm going to just max, and I'm going to leave that there so that when we get a pal that can cook, they'll cook. It's getting dark. And let's go collect all the stuff. These cats are rocking it. There we go. Now, those guys are still level 7, so I'm not going to attempt to attack and gather one of those until we are a little bit stronger. There we go. And let's see. We can fit another pal, so let's try to build a bed, but first... I want to make a berry plantation, but I need a bunch of wood to do that. Okay, there's some. Now, I actually am weighed down, so I am one pound overweight. I can move, but I'm slightly slower. That's okay, though, because we're going to build the berry plantation immediately, and we don't have to worry about it. I'm just going to build it over here, off to the side, and they're going to come build it, and now I can move. Now, remember, if I have more cats in my party, I wouldn't have to worry about that at all, because they give me extra carry weight. But right now, I don't really want carry weight. I want pals at my base doing um, friendly labor. And I'm going to go to this box. I'm going to open it. And I'm just going to kick in um, all of these supplies that I don't need to carry. So now my weight is down to like 30. I'll even put in these seeds. Uh, I'm going to get my torch out and show you this um, berry box. So, 
you have to have a pal that can plant to plant the seeds. Um, but they we don't have one, so I'll do it. Now, the cool thing about this game is, unlike, you know, Stardew Valley or something like that, you don't need seeds to plant. You just need seeds to build the initial berry box. And then it's part of the requirement to build the berry box. So if you have enough to build the box, you have enough seeds forever for it. Um, but you need to water and plant them yourself currently because we don't have any pals that can plant or water. But we're going to get those very soon. Luckily in this game, you just have a watering can handy. So you just have to push X and hold it to water this up. And then this will grow. And if you have any pals that can harvest, they will get this for you. There we go. So now this just has to grow. We have to leave it alone. You can see all three of the pals that we have here are sleeping. I'm going to go ahead and build another bed for uh, a fourth pal at the base. And they're sleeping, so I'll build it. There we go. And we can now move in another pal. And I will. I'm going to move in my very last pal, which is my lamb ball. And put it at the base to work. Just like that. It drops in from the sky, and it's going to go to sleep. Bam. And now, um, we can upgrade the base. And we can get another um, pal, but they want us to build the pal gear workshop. So, at this point, we have... A functioning base and I'll just show you you see how it's the moon right there um, if I um, try to use this it's not counting this as a full roof so even though we're under the roof it does not register that so we're gonna have to build a little bit more to uh, get this to count it as a roof so I'll build this here and we will um, you know build this Oh my god, I'm in the water. That's okay. Oh, it's, it's worth mentioning. Actually, I'll exit the build menu. You can climb just like in Zelda. So you just jump at the wall and you climb and you use stamina and you can climb stuff. So um, let's build inside. Let's not fall in the water. That was It's so embarrassing. All right, we're going to put this right here. And then I'm going to build a slanted roof. And I'm gonna, you have to keep looking up until... It looks like it's going to snap on that, and then you rotate it around like this. And then you look up at this. Uh, oops, I pushed X instead of Y. You look up like this, and there we go. And then now, is this enough roof? No. So we need to build a flat roof in the middle. And so we will. And we don't have enough materials, but let's see if this is enough roof. It is not. It is not happy. So, sadly, it's not letting us sleep through the night, and we might have to complete this roofing project. But that's okay. We don't have enough materials, they say. Yes, we do. We just clobber this wall and clobber that wall. And let's see what it's going to take to get a full roof. Now, in my game, honestly, I think I just built a flat roof right over it, and it worked. Um, so, maybe the slanted roof is just a little bit too fancy. Um, we can build a another... Uh, let's see if this is enough. No. No, it's not. Alright. It's all blown up in my face with this slanted roof. It looks cool. Um, oops, I didn't mean to set that. I'm trying to switch. There we go. Now, you see how it's cold? So, we're freezing. But if we go near the fire, we're okay. Or, um, if we pull out our torch, we're okay. Now, look at the baked berries. You see how they're manually cooking? It's just really slow. So, you could just leave them there, and even if a pal isn't cooking it for you faster, it'll get there. Now, once we make... The, uh, I'm going to pull out the torch. Once we make the clothing, we'll be okay. So, I could make, um, cloth, but I don't have enough material yet. Because we don't have the ranch, we don't have enough lamb balls, we need to go fight them and defeat them to get the cloth so we could make clothing, and then we wouldn't be cold, 
at night time. But if we carry the torch around, we're pretty good. Now, if I select the axe, keep an eye on my health. You might wonder, what does being cold do? Being cold, it's um, taxing my hunger extra, I believe, and it's also hurting me. So, not great. There we go. Yep, you can see my hunger is no longer being negatively impacted. And I'm not losing any health. Now, I'm going to go here, and we'll go ahead and just build these wooden walls like so. Bing. 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 So that we can make the roof on this side. Now, is this enough roof to sleep? It is not. So, in a situation like this, I'm going to have to do what I don't want to do, which is this. Um, and that is... Uh, <laughs> let me try this. Maybe I, I might need to wall this in. Like I said, in my game of this, I did not, um... build the slanted roof. I just built the flat roof and it worked fine. So I was trying to get fancy for the guide and now it's like blowing up in my face because um, it is not what I expected to have happen. And why can't I rotate that? Um, it's This says it's colliding with something, which is not what I anticipated to have happen. Um, there we go. Oh, I have to build the other one. Okay. Interesting. Um... Or here, let me fix this. I need to go destroy these walls that are on the outside is the issue. Let me get my hammer. And give me these. One, two, three. And now let's see if I can build the uh, triangular wall. No? No, it doesn't like it. Well, uh, I gotta say that's un unfortunate. So there is still some wonkiness with the wall building, it appears. And if that's going to be the case, let me see, can I sleep? No. If it's going to be the case, then we're going to do this. I'll show you. We'll show this game. Just like that. And then um, I'm going to uh, dismantle my bed. And we're going to build another bed. And see if this works. What if I build the bed back here, huh? They all want to come in and help. No, 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 guys. Let me just build it. They can help. Okay, fine. It works. Do you see that? I'm going to get out. So, build your bed under a flat roof. The fancy, cool-looking roof. Um, if you know how to make it work, how to get that other triangular panel, and if even that would have worked, or maybe I build the bed under the center panel of the flat roof instead of the this roof, and it'll work. We're okay. And we're rocking. So, a little bit of a odd roof design, but we leveled up. And that is because our pals are getting experience for us while they work too. So, everybody, we have some pals working at our base. We have ourselves um, a bed that we can pass night with if we want. We've got a workbench, we've got a repair table, we've got a storage box. We've got a fireplace, we've got a garden, we've got pal beds, we've got a feed box. We're doing beautifully. And this is a good first look at pal world and just getting started in the game. 
what we need to do is continue following the tutorial, following the um, missions on our pal box, and capturing more pals and exploring the world. I hope you all have found this guide to be useful so far for just getting started in the game, and we're going to continue this series to learn more about Pal World. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below, and I really hope that you are enjoying the game. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.